jockey Jim McElhenney. Nine minutes until post time. Here are the results from that seventh one at Fort Erie. 58 and four, the finish time at five eighths of a mile. It was close. The two long shots battling through the home stretch, but Eldridge Lindsay with his second shocker of the afternoon. Sandusky pays 53.50 on the nose over Sir Austin. And third was the number five horse Dominican Waltz for Harding. 25 to go before the Prince of Wales, inside of nine remaining before the Chinese Cultural Center stakes, coast to coast on the score. Sons of the Sports Bar! I am shooting. Since in the Chinese Cultural Center stakes at Woodbine, co favorites, uh, or close to it at least, 8 to 5, Perfect Soul. At 9 to 5, the four horse strut the stage and closing in on this mile and 3 eighths contest. And uh, that you're in exactly the place you want to be if you're a fan of horse racing right now. A good look at the Queen's Plate champion right there, Wando, opening at 1 to 9 with just a little more than 20 minutes to go before the second jewel of Canada's Triple Crown. A nine-length win for this horse in the Queen's Plate. Serge LeBlanc at the head of the horse, the assistant to conditioner Mike Keogh, and uh, Wando looking magnificent as usual. Part of the story, it was just prior to race number seven that the main track at Fort Erie was downgraded to muddy. Wando without experience on a wet track, but uh, you would think that a good horse could overcome this kind of situation. We'll see if he's able to do that uh, very soon. And uh, that son of Langfuer for Gus Schickadans, again at one to nine, all of the respect being afforded the horse that will be ridden by Patrick Husbands. And part of the backdrop leading up to this, two prior stakes races so far today at Fort Erie, both of them won by, you guessed it, Patrick Husbands, Garant in the Ben Burb and Agolo in the Border Cup and he will have the ride on this sensational horse. Only one other active three-year-old in North America has earned a higher buyer speed figure than Wando himself earned in the Queen's Plate. He and his stablemate Mobile both uh, getting invitations to the Haskell which uh, you would suspect that they will not attend at this point, that being on the third of next month in New Jersey. But it's hard to say what might take place uh, if he comes up with a good effort here today. That August 9th Breeders' Stakes, the third jewel of Canada's Triple Crown coming up at Woodbine on the grass, and Wando looking tremendous yet again. He will face a uh, couple of other contestants in this race, the Samsung Farm entry Shoalwater, son of Smart Strike right now at seven to one and the John Ross trained Arco's gold at nine to one among the field of seven. But Wando with those ears up, and uh, there is the note as well that you should be aware of is that uh, kind of a shoeing adjustment being made with Wando wearing those inserts for Mike Keogh on this day, maybe to give him a little bit more traction in that off track. And Keogh very much hands on with 19 on the clock and now at one to five is Wando with about two minutes to go before the Chinese Cultural Center stakes at Woodbine, uh, continuing at eight to five, perfect soul, and at nine to five, strut the stage there. And here's the current odds board at Woodbine. As we've got uh, others that are getting ready to go in this race, the turf champion three-year-old from a year ago, Port Cullis, leaving from stall number two on the gate as Slade Callahan tries to make it back-to-back -back wins. The Samsung Farm, not only with Shoalwater in the Prince of Wales, but also with three horses in this race. And because of some new regulations, they run uncoupled in this race. The seven angel on the wing for Lori Gulas, a son of Sky Classic, and Lori winning this race last year with Strike Smartly. Another of the contestants uh, for the Samsung Farm, of course, strut the stage with some big expectations for him too. And he makes just his second start back off the shelf, having runner up, having run runner up to Perfect Soul in the King Edward Breeders' Cup. Callahan right there as part of your picture with Port Cullis right now at 10 to one and Emil Ram Sammy also getting ready to go with Stage Classic, a son of Sky Classic being sent out by Dave Cody. 18 away from the Prince of Wales where Wando continues at one to nine and co-favorites getting ready to strut their stuff here. Both of them Woodbine based. The outsiders including the Kieran McLaughlin number six deputy strike being ridden by Nassim Saneth and the Walter Mindentner trained Colonial Colony for Richard Dos Ramos. Couple of major league events coming up on the score. The 60 second warning in effect and a 
a bountiful field in both of these upcoming races, uh, down to 17 minutes away from the eighth one at Fort Erie Racetrack. Will it be Perfect Soul, the three, or Strut the Stage, the four? Maybe one of the outside invaders in the Chinese Cultural Center stakes for the call. Here's track announcer Dan Loisel. Forward along with Deputy Strike. Waiting on Strut the Stage. Angel on the wing, and to the outside, Soldier of Pleasure. They're at the post. Uh, they're off in the Chinese Cultural Center Stakes. Good beginning. Stage classic, perfect soul. And uh, from the outside, Angel on the wing. Jumps out to an early lead, Angel on the wing. Stage classic, uh, perfect souls tucked in behind the leaders. Then we have a strut the stage. Port Cullis is toward the inside. Then Deputy Strike in between horses. Colonial Colony, Soldier of Pleasure trails in the early going. The opening quarter was in 24 and one fifth of a second. And they straighten out into the backstretch. An angel on the wing dictates the pace. Perfect Soul, a reserved second. A stage classics to the inside third. Strut the stage fourth, five lengths off the lead. Then we have Deputy Strike in uh, fifth position. Uh, back in a sixth is Colonial Colony. Then Port Cullis, who has one horse beaten, Soldier of Pleasure, 49 seconds. Make that 49 and one fifth of a second for the opening half mile. Still in front, Angel on the wing. Stage Classic is second. Perfect Soul just tugging at Landry out there. Just a length off the lead. Strut the stages fourth, has three lengths to make up. Deputy Strike, back five lengths off of Angel on the wing, then Port Cullis, Colonial Colony, Soldier of Pleasure, and they're into the far turn off, three quarters and 13 and two. Perfect Soul, still tugging at Landry at the midpoint of the turn. Side is Angel on the wing as they come to the three eighths pull. Strut the stage is two lengths off the lead. To the inside is Stage a Classic, then Deputy Strike, and Perfect Soul is up on the outside to take the lead. Landry glances back and sees Strut the stage. And to the inside is Angel on the wing. They're in the final quarter mile. Perfect Soul has taken the lead. Strut the stage is in an all out drive. Angel on the wing is hanging tough toward the inside. Perfect Soul with the lead. Strut the stage is coming on now. And it's Strut the stage on the outside who has taken the lead from Perfect Soul. Strut the stage to win the Chinese Cultural Center Stakes. Perfect Soul second best. Angel on the wing holds on for third. Tremendous event right there and some revenge being exacted on his arch rival. Perfect Soul triumphant in the King Edward Breeders' Cup but strut the stage stronger in his second start back off the shelf. A good effort for this horse here as he just comes on gamely down the lane, gets to the side of uh, Perfect Soul and says, you know what, today's the day, see you later. Strut the stage with Todd Cable aboard, Mark Frost had the conditioner of this one for Samson Farms. Perfect Soul running a good race, but uh, strut the stage just had his game face on and that was all there was. And as they crossed the line at Woodbine, it was four, three, and seven, so Samson Farm able to pick up two of the top three positions in that race and they'll send out Shoalwater and the Prince of Wales as we get a look at Son of a Whack for Corey Clark. There's a look at our horses for race number eight at Fort Erie. This is the Prince of Wales Stakes and Son of a Whack going forward currently at odds of 18 to 1, not the longest shot on the board. Shoalwater actually the outside uh, six or the six horse Sully Hull is our longest shot on the board at 25 to 1 and there's a look at Sully Hall. Dino Luciani running down earlier this morning, this afternoon, to ride this one for David Bell. And Sully Hall is a big uh, colt, three years old. He's by Dance Brightly. So we take a look at everyone out there in the uh, paddock for the biggest race of the year at Fort Erie. And this is the Prince of Wales Stakes. There's Wando and Serge LeBlanc and Amanda Irwin leading him around. And there's the number five horse, a son of a whack, with Kiori Clark. This one going forward for trainer Lane Gillaforte. Part of the storyline here, uh, the track being downgraded just prior to race number seven, it's now muddy, and as we saw, Wando wearing the inserts for trainer Mike Keogh, 
and uh, we'll see how he can handle this kind of a surface, uh, the son of Langfuhrer with that dominant effort in the Queen's Plate. Well, Wando's handled everything that's put to, he's been put to the test with so far. He's never had a muddy track in all of his races, and I know that was a concern for Mike Keel, but uh, Wando certainly is trained in it. He handles it fine in the morning, and this horse is much the best on any given day, so I think this is just going to be another one of those days for Wando. Great crowd in attendance. A look at the group in the post parade coming next. Will they do that? Well, we'll find out 12 minutes from now when the bell rings, but it's David Clark aboard Shoalwater. This one runs fourth in the Queen's Plate and could be sitting on a much improved race. It is currently on the board as the second choice, seven to one, the odds currently. A great crowd on hand this afternoon at Fort Erie for the second jewel in Canada's Triple Crown. Again, the total purse is $500,000. $300,000 goes to the winner. We have 11 minutes to post for our eighth and featured race of the afternoon and for the post parade, let's send it upstairs to track announcer Daryl Wells. Thank you very much, Brian. The horse is on the track for the 68th edition of the Prince of Wales Stakes. Number one is Peef, owned by Arosa Farms, trained by Malcolm Pierce, and written by Ray Sabrin. Two is Arco's Gold, owned by Alex and Stephen Diorio, trained by John Ross, with Constant Montpellier. Number three, from Knob Hill Stable, Gavro, trained by Alec Fair, and the jockey, Stephen Bain. Number four is Wando, owned by Gus Shigadans, trained by Mike Keel, written by Patrick Husbands. Number five is John Frank's Son of a Whack, trained by Lane Gilliforti, and written by Corey Clark. Number six from Beckloat Stable, Sully Hull, trained by Dave Bell with Dino Luciani. And seven from Samsung Farm, Shoalwater, trained by Mark Frosted, and written by David Clark. Your field for the Prince of Wales Stakes, they'll be at the post in 10 minutes. You get the sense the track announcer Darrell Wells Jr. is looking forward to calling this one, and why wouldn't he, with a good cast of three-year-olds getting ready to go in less than ten. Let's right, so look at the prices for our feature race here at Woodbine. Stretch the stage paying $6.10. We will have the feature of the day, the Prince of Wales, in less than ten minutes right after this break. Hey, how are you going to use it? I've gone from a fast track to a muddy surface, and uh, although every, everybody's talking about Wando not running on the, been able to run on the surface yet, he's never had a race on it, no one else has either. Brand new challenge for these, and we'll see how they're able to handle it. Peef is a horse that has changed trainers on several occasions uh, throughout this season, or maybe not several occasions, but uh, Malcolm Pierce taking over. Uh, it had been Rita Schnitzler prior to, and... Peef attempting to pull off what would be considered a shocking upset right now at 24 to 1. The reason why he is such a long shot, uh, as you look at Arco's gold right now for Constant Montpellier, the dominating effort for Wando in his Queen's Plate win, uh, it was something to behold. Wando's Queen's Plate win is something we're going to take a look at coming up. Here it is. They're off in the Queen's Plate stakes. Dance engagement broke sharply from the extreme outside. Shoal Water is uh, showing early speed, as is Wando. El Grand Maestro is uh, toward the rail. Mobo is tucked in nicely behind horses as they move in front of us for the first time. And Wando is just tugging at Patrick Husbands as they pass under the wire for the first time. Shoalwater is second, uh, Mobiles to the inside, and to the outside is Dance Engagement. Then we have Sir Charles uh, Schnabel who will save ground. Rock again is in amongst horses, then Peef and Buttonwood. Elusive Force out of trouble on the outside, back eight lengths off the lead. Then the Coronation Futurity winner, Arcos uh, Gold, El Gran Maestro, has one horse beaten, and that is Soli Ho as they move into the backstretch. And it's Wando who comes away with the lead. Five furlongs remaining, and it's Wando by two and a half. Shoalwater tracks intently in second. Mobile is to the inside, third, three lengths off of Wando. Dance engagement is fourth. Peep is to the inside, fifth. Sir Charles Schnabel is between horses. Rock again, clear of trouble, back five lengths off the lead. Three quarters and 11 and four. 
and they head toward the far turn. Three furlongs to go in the Queen's Plate, and Wando leads by a length and a half. Showwater is second, Mobo is to the inside in a third position. Rock again is coming with a bid as they hit the quarter pole. It is Wando leading them over to the top of the stretch. Patrick Husbands asks him for his heart and he opens up. It is Wando by six into the lane. Mobile to the inside. Rock again on the outside. Final furlong. It is all Wando. Sharp, strong, and a dominating winner of the Queen's Plate. Wando, simply spectacular. And that was this year's Queen's Plate. And Wando uh, trying to hold on to his title here as the top three-year-old in Canada as he goes forward in the post for the Queen's for the Prince of Wales this afternoon. Wando, the winner of the Queen's Plate this year. A spectacular effort, as uh, Dan Lozell alluded to. And there's a look at Wando there with Patrick Husbands. And behind the Palomino Pony, the four horse, Wando, going ho forward for trainer Mike Keogh. Interestingly enough, Wando is by Langfear, and uh, the, he's the favorite. And the longest shot on the board at 26 to 1, Peef, is also by Langfear, and uh, he's our longest shot. There's a look at the five horse. This is Son of a Whack, Lane Gilliforti, and Corey Clark. You talk about the sires uh, being in common of those one and four horses. Uh, we've seen Mobile come back off of his second place finish in the Queen's Plate to win the Toronto Cup. Also a son of Langfuhr, and uh, that's part of the story really for these three-year-olds at this stage, is it not? Uh, in Canada with the resurgence of the Canadian breeding and some very good ones being produced. Well, they have, certainly have some good three-year-olds coming forward this year here at Woodbine in an Ontario, Canada cross. But uh, we've seen probably one of the best field of three-year-olds in the Queen's Plate this year and uh, continues to show, but a lot of them uh, staying away from Wando in the Prince of Wales. There's only six other horses wanting to go to the post with this horse today as he is currently at one to five. There's a look at your seven horse at six to one. This is Shoalwater. David Clark riding this one for Mark Frostad, who just won the Chinese Cultural Center Stakes here in Toronto with Strut the Stage. Shoalwater showing some good things as a two-year-old as well. He was second in the Cup and Saucer Stakes to Mobile and uh, right now is getting ready to roll. Was uh, fourth, beaten 13 lengths in the Queen's Plate in his third start as a three-year-old and uh, we'll see how he's able to do very soon right now at less than six to one. So uh, Shoalwater for the Samson Farm attempting to uh, post what would be considered an upset and boy oh boy, strut the stage and uh, Angel on the wing, first and third, and that Samsung farm influence, something that we've seen so many for so many years here. So if you're curious about Strut the Stage in the uh, feature race at Woodbine, we'll get to the prices after the race of the Prince of Wales. Strut the Stage paid $6.10 for that, and the Tri paid $98.20, so we will get you uh, more of the prices. And uh, we currently have less than three minutes to go before race number eight. Race number eight is the Prince of Wales Stakes, if you're just joining us. This is the 68th running of it. Track has come up muddy there at Fort Erie was listed as fast earlier today but they had a little bit of a downpouring and um, interestingly enough the track has gotten a little bit sloppy but it's not too bad this guys have cleared up and it's a little nicer there in Fort Erie now should be just a heavy track won't be too bad three horse Gavro at 20 to 1 for uh, the Knob Hill stable a son of El Prado and Alec Fair the conditioner, a horse that was second against allowance level competition, uh, maybe not developing quite as quickly as they had hoped as a three-year-old, but he's fresh, uh, certainly, and coming in for Steve Bay and a guy that's uh, no stranger to long shot winners in these major league stakes races. Gavro is going forward and Steve Bay and the winner of the Queen's Plate last year gets the call on this one for John Alex Fair. Currently at odds of 20 to 1, our second longest shot on the board. And uh, we've got a couple of I'm going to make a little... So with two to go, uh, we've got Wando now at one to four and uh, continuing to count down toward this second jewel of Canada's Triple Crown and uh, he's getting ready to strut their stuff. Another of the storylines we've got uh, in this race, Corey Clark piloting the number five son of a whack and the seven Shoalwater with David Clark ready, getting ready to go uh, at six to one right now and Corey's horse for Lane Gilliforti at 19 to one and 
you know that both of them would like to enjoy some success in this particular race. Talked to Corey about her horse uh, earlier this week when she was riding up here at Woodbine. She said, you know, the horse is a bit of a long shot going in the race currently. Right now, Son of a Whack is at 19 to 1, but she said you can't win unless you try, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Corey's a regular rider for Lane Gilla 40 down in Fort Erie, and Corey's uh, having her first effort at a Triple Crown race here in Canada, so we wish her all the best in this race, and Wando currently still the favorite at 1 to 4, the number 4 horse. I'd like to know how many race fans are out in the province of Ontario today. It's jammed at Woodbine for C Chinese Cultural Day. And look at these pictures from the border oval with people awaiting what uh, might be uh, another win for the number four horse, Wando, and uh, kind of an exciting time to be a fan of this racing game. Big day of racing in Fort Erie this afternoon. The biggest day there. The horses are getting ready to load in the gate. We go to Darrell Wells Jr. for the call of the Prince of Wales Stakes. And Echo's Gold is in the gate. Up next is Gavro, all set. And Wando is moving in as well, followed there by Son of a Whack. Sully Hall goes into the gate. To the outside is Shoalwater. And waiting now for Peef. There at the post. They're off in the uh, Prince of Wales stakes. Wando in the center. Shoalwater is up on the outside. Gavro has moved up now down towards the inside. The field moving through the stretch for the uh, first time. And it is Shoalwater up on the outside. Wando to the inside. The game is on. And it is Wando by a neck as they move to the clubhouse turn. Shoalwater is right there on the outside. And Gavro is running along third. Son of a Whack is fourth on the outside, and Echo's Gold is fifth. Then we have Peef and Sully Hall. The opening quarter, they zipped it in 22 and 4, and the field set to move along the backstretch, and it is Wando who leads the way. Shoalwater has backed off on the outside. Gavro third along the rail. Then we have Son of a Whack who runs along fourth. There's a break of five back to Echo's Gold, another four to Peef. And another six to uh, Sully Hall. Half a mile in 46 and two, four furlongs to go. And Wando is leading the way into the fire turn. And Shoalwater is right there now on the outside. Gavro is down towards the rail. And Arco's Gold is getting racing room down along the inside. The uh, field comes up to the top of the stretch in the Prince of Wales. And the plate winner. Wando is looking good. Husbands takes a look over his shoulder. Shoalwater is three lengths back, but Arco's Gold is now moved up along the rail, coming through the stretch. They have an eighth of a mile to go. It is Wando who has the lead. Wando's out in front and looking good. Sharp today, he is on his game, and one step closer to the Triple Crown. It is Wando to win the Prince of Wales Stakes. Arco's Gold second, and Shoalwater third. Tremendous win for the son of Langfuhr, owned and bred by Gus Schickadans. Patrick Husbands, riding in three stakes races today at Fort Erie, sweeps them, and that triple crown dream remains alive for the horse known as Wando. He was sensational. Makes you think that uh, Patrick deserved to be on the front page of the sports section this afternoon as he sweeps the three stake races in Fort Erie. This one, and uh, you just gotta can't take anything away from Wando. Absolutely the best horse out there. Ears forward. I mean, they're just driving home. Look at this. He's the cutest horse out there. I can't believe this race. Wando winning this one easily under a hand ride with Patrick Husbands coming down on the lane. For him, it's easy. I mean, if it was like this for every horse, it'd be an easy game. Job well done for the Keogh Stables and the Chicken Dance and uh, the crew of my Keogh's barn. We'll be back with the uh, winner's circle for the Prince of Wales. 
through as they crossed the line. It was 4-2-7. Arco's Gold second, Shoalwater third, and Peef finishing in fourth spot. But this uh, is the champion, certainly, and nice to see Gus Shikadans right up and close and personal. There's Gus Shikadans with this horse. He's the man in the cowboy hat. Amanda Irwin is the groom there, the young blonde girl, and uh, Serge LeBlanc in the suit attending to the horse. And Mike Keogh in behind there, just walking out of your picture, the trainer of Wando this afternoon. There's a look at the Prince of Wales blanket, the flower blanket that goes across traditionally for the winning of the Prince of Wales, the second jewel in the Canadian Triple Crown. And uh, big, big effort for this horse this afternoon. Now he's been able to run on a fast track. He's been able to run on a muddy track. I guess the next question is, can he run on the turf? Well, it just doesn't seem like there's any obstacle that's too great for this guy. No, and there's a there's Louise McDonald, his exercise rider there on the outside of your picture. Uh, she's been with this horse for quite a while. One concern about this is, will the horse run in the to continue the uh, Triple Crown? He's been invited down to Saratoga to run in the stakes there. So uh, where will this horse run next? They'll wait to see. But at this time, I'm sure that the chicken dances and the Keos and everybody involved with this stable just want to enjoy today's big win. 12 minutes to go before the ninth one at Woodbine. Uh, just giving you a heads up there as well as we are inside of a dozen before the first half of the late double there. But what a glorious picture this is. And Gus Chickadan's a proud owner and breeder of the winner of this edition, the 68th running of the Prince of Wales Stakes and those fans that had jammed the grandstand at Fort Erie Racetrack for this big day being rewarded for uh, everything that they had hoped. They got to see uh, what could be one of the best horses ever to come out of Canada. Well, Wando certainly is a nice horse and uh, Mr. Chicken Dance, he's had some exceptional horses. The sire of this horse, Langfair, was a great horse and uh, continues to be a great sire and Wando's the offspring of that and it's just an tribute to Canadian breeding and it's an, a good tribute to uh, Mr. Chicken Dance's efforts and uh, my cue efforts in the few years. I mean, they had a couple of years, things were slow, and after Woodcarver, they, things kind of slowed down for them, and they just kept doing the same thing they always do, and uh, before you know it, there they have, they have Wando, and then don't forget, there's Mobile back in the barn. And a luxurious decision to make that you allude to as well, uh, does the horse go on and face what might be even more difficult competition in the States with that meet at Saratoga opening on Wednesday? You talk about the Traverse as a possibility, but again, uh, the 9th of August, the date that race fans will want to mark down on their calendar, if, and uh, many suspect that this horse will attempt to uh, go on and conclude that run at the Triple Crown, but uh, what about turf as a possibility for this guy and uh, some of the dates that are ahead for him? I think one of my uh, cues and the chicken dance's concerns is now they, if they go to the breeder stakes with uh, Mobile, they're probably going to go there with Mobile because he can, he's won on the turf, he won the Toronto Cup, so then now we've got Mobile and Wando, and the one thing Mike never likes to do with these two horses is run them against each other because he hates to see either one of them get beat, he likes to put them in the right opportunity, so, you know, at this point in time, I'm sure they're just enjoying, enjoying their win here at uh, Fort Erie, a little foggy that it is, and uh, there we go, but uh, you know, I'm certainly sure that uh, it, this is going to be a big day for them, and uh, you can't take anything away from this horse, because as it stands now, this horse, he before he even went into today's race, he made over $1.1 million, you add on to 60% of 500000 this afternoon, horses made. Sandy Hawley has had a chance to win two triple crowns, and Sandy, you were denied. One guy trying to deny Wando today is Robert Landry. That's right, Jeff. I've had a couple of tries at it. Unfortunately, I came up a little bit short. Wando is going for it uh, today. I have Robert Landry here. Robert rides for sale in today's breeders. Rob, this horse is undefeated. He's won two in a row. Last time he won on the turf by four lengths, going a mile. Can he go a mile and a half? Well, I think he can. I mean, everything's going to depend on the on the pace, naturally. But, uh, you know, he's a perfect two for two, and he's, uh, he's run well on the grass, and he's finished up strong last time. So I'm looking for a big race out of him. Well, Wando is definitely the horse to beat in here. He's got a ton of speed. You have a lot of speed too. Both times you've been on the lead. What are your tactics here today? Well, my horse runs on the lead. He's a free running horse and that's where he's gonna be. And I mean, if that's where uh, Wando's gonna be, well then it's gonna, it's gonna be a horse race from uh, gate to wire. Well, last year he finished uh, second on a horse called El Soprano and the breeders here. Yeah, I guess you'd like to move that up one notch today. Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, Wando's a great horse and you know, you, I'd like to be the one that uh, upsets him. Well, good luck here in the 113th running of the Breeders, Rob. All the best. Thank you very much. Back to you, Jeff. Okay, Sandy, Robert's had a great year already. He won the Avalino Gomez Memorial Award and the Labatt Woodbine Oaks as well. So a Breeders' Stakes title would be nice in his pocket too. Let's meet now some of the contenders for today's feature event with racing analyst Jim Bannon. For a horse that wins the first two jewels of the Canadian Triple Crown, the Breeders' Stakes is the gateway to greatness. With approval. 